So the uh, last day of Tashlumen, of completing whatever needs to be completed on Shavuos, time of Yisamigdash, was today. So it means if, as we say in the, uh, in the Siddur, which the Siddur is meant for every Neshama, and therefore it's very relevant to everybody, the Siddur before Vodzin is a list of the days you don't say Tachem. And it says in the Siddur that why don't you say Tachem until 12th of 7? Because in 12th of 7, um, till that day, you're So, the base, time in the base of Mikdash, if you brought your sacrifice on Shavuos, nothing you need to do after Shavuos, you're done. Uh, but now, because we don't have base of Mikdash, we don't have the advantage of bringing the sacrifices yet. But on the other hand, regarding, regarding uh, the days after Shavuos, regarding the, they're not a, a relevant to bring the physical sacrifice as they were before, but they are relevant to the ruchnius, the spirituality that the um, of, of days of Shavuos. So, what is their relevance? What is this day about? A lot of good decisions that people made on Shavuos, and uh, they started to do different things. So, today is a day when Hashem gives us the ability to perfect whatever we started. So the Shluman doesn't just mean to pay up what was missing. Hashemun also means to perfect. So even if someone celebrated Shavuos perfectly, which the parallel for this would be to bring the sacrifice to Shavuos. So in time of Yisimik, there will be no, there'll be no interest and no relevance in the days after Shavuos because you did it already. But since we don't have Yisimik, so there is always, it's always possible to reach a higher level than it was before. As Alter writes in Tanya, that sometimes a person experiences Timtum Alev, his heart is stuffed up, not because he did anything wrong that day necessarily, but because Hashem wants him to reach a higher level of tshuva, so therefore there is some kind of blockages in, 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 his, in his feelings, in his heart, in order that, to reach a higher level of tshuva, Hashem wants to, to, because he's reached a higher level, Hashem wants him to, to uh, ascend, and therefore he has to uh, go to a different place. So if Hashem gave us another day, it's a brand new day today, and the brand new Yontif and 12th day of Sivan. That means Hashem is giving us today an opportunity to uh, to perfect whatever we started on Shavuos. This is true every year. And it's true also um, this year, but this year there's a special um, setup of the year as ever discussed in Tav Shemem Aleph, which there was a similar setup where it's 12th of Sivan, was also in Parshas Baalischa. Parshas Baalischa begins with the commandment to Aaron to light the Menera. And then the Torah discusses how the Menera should be made, which seemingly both things don't make sense. First of all, the building of the Menera was discussed in Parshas Truma. And as discussed again in Parshas Ayakil, Parshas Truma was a commandment of Hashem Tamesha how to build the Menera. Parshas Viakil was how they actually did build the Menera. And here, the Parsha Balizcha discusses again, brand new, as if we never heard about it before, how to make the Menera. Second of all, we, we read over here about Aaron Akain, lighting the Menera. Why, why is this all repeated again? And also, when the Torah does repeat about Aaron Akain, lighting the Menera, the Torah does this in an unusual way. It talks about first lighting the Menera and then building the Menera. Well, you can't light the Menera until the Menera is built. So why does the Menera, why does the Torah begin with the uh, build, the lighting of the Menera before the kindling of the Menera? And what does that relevance does this have to the 12th day of Sivan? 
So, so what does that say? There's a mime with the Alter Rebbe, Tafkov Samach Vav. The Alter Rebbe explains that Arna Koyin is a level of, oh, Rebbe Zev, Masmach to Rebbe Zev. Arna Koyin, Arna Koyin is related to Chochma of Atzilus. And although the Torah described before the building of the era and lighting of the era, but the Torah didn't discuss its relevance to Aaron, its relevance to Chachum Atzilus. So here the Torah tells us that the something that Aaron does in relationship to the what does Aaron do? There is a building of the era, which the spiritual meaning of the building of the era is the building of the spirit of Malchus. And there is the lighting of the era, which means the elevation, the lifting up, the Lifting up the level of Malchus. So Aaron Akoyin accomplishes both Binyan HaMalchus, the great, the building of the sphere of Malchus, and Aaron can also accomplishes Aliyah HaMalchus, elevation of Malchus. He lifts Malchus up to, to where Malchus needs to be. What is Malchus? Malchus in general is a source of all Nisham Yisrael. All souls come from Atzilus, and they are relevant to Malchus. That's why Malchus is called in Kabbalah, it's Malchus is called Knesset Yisrael. It's called the Gathering of Israel because all the Shamas are gathered there in the city of Malchus. So Aaron Akoin has an impact both in, 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 the, in the building of the Neshamas, so to speak, and in elevating the Neshamas. What does that have to do with us? So to understand exactly what this has to do with us, let's go back to the Shem's introduction to giving the Torah. Hashem gave us the Torah. Hashem said, you should be for me a kingdom of Kayanim. And in Kayanim themselves, there are different kinds of Kayanim. There are regular Kayanim and the Kayan Gladl. What's the difference between a regular Kayanim and the Kayan Gladl? So a regular Kayan has to always be pure to be ready to serve Hashem. When it's his time to serve Hashem, he has to be pure and he has to be ready to serve. Kayan is about serving Hashem in the Beis Hamikdash, in a face to face way. A Kayan Gladl has a unique distinction. That he has to always live in Yerushalayim. Can never leave the place of holiness of Yerushalayim. Must always be in Yerushalayim. What's the theme of Yerushalayim? What's the meaning of Yerushalayim? Yerushalayim means to be in a state of Yerushalayim, be in a state of total fear of Hashem. So unlike a regular kain who was able to also uh, regular kain would go out and they would collect their truma and they would meet people and, and but the kain gadol. He had to always be in this elevated state in Shalayim. And the Ramam says it's not just Aaron Kain Gadol, but every single Jew is able to achieve, um, able to achieve something of that state of Aaron Akoin to be in a state of Yerushalayim, to be in a state of reverence and, and being in that intimacy with Hashem in the way that Aaron Akoin was. Everyone's capable, call, the language the Ramam is. Call Ish ve Ish Hashanad Barucha Yisay. Any person that has a magnanimous spirit that he wants to be a servant of Hashem, he is sanctified. He is a level of a kain gadol. Hashem, that's what Hashem told us before giving us the Torah. He wants us to be a kain gadol. Yeah, every every Jew is able to be in that state of kain gadol. And there are some people which are able to be in that state all the time, as the Gemara says about Rabbi Shmuel, Rabbi Shmuel, Rabbi Shmuel Yechai. an argument of whether or not people should go to work. Rabbi Shmuel Yechai. Was of the opinion that no one should go to work because he says, should Go to work. What about your Torah? Can't go to work. Should only study Torah. I, it says in the Torah, you should gather your grain and your wine and your oil. It says, Other people will do that. Let other people do that. You learn Torah. You do the will of Hashem. As it says in the first section of Shema, the will of Hashem is, as a musician Magad explains, Serve Hashem in a way of beyond all limitations. So then everyone will do your the work for you. No reason to work by yourself. That's the opinion of Rishim Then there was the opinion of Yishmol. Yishmol says, uh, nope. So he says, you have to go to work. There's the You got to gather your grain and oil yourself. So some sages adopted the opinion of Rishim unsuccessfully. Didn't work for them. Uh, but people who dropped it the way of Rabbi Bishmuel, it didn't work. Rabbi Shmuel's manner of service is more relevant to everybody. That means that being in a state of Kren Godel all the time is not necessarily something that everyone's able to achieve. But uh, being a, being a coin in general, being someone who is a servant of Hashem, or 
Rashi translates, and Ezra translates Cain, the different translations of, of Hashem tells it before giving the Torah, he wants us to be a kingdom of Kainim. So there are the three translations. There's those who translate this as Hashem wants us to be Kainim Delim, but that's possible sometimes to be in an elevated state, to be in a state of Yerushalayim. Then there is to be a regular Kain, means to stand up and serve Hashem. And there is, as Rashi translates, a Kain means a Sar. Sar means an officer. An officer has a role that he is supposed to be subordinate to his commanding officer. So that means that he has the ability and is commanded to be a servant of Hashem to overcome his desires, what Hashem wants him to do. That's the meaning of being a sar, to show up and do what Hashem wants you to do. Do a skafia, basically. So even if you can't be a kohen level, and you're not in the level of yira um, shom, of complete fear, not in the level of being Yerushalayim, but everyone's able and commanded to be at least level of a sar, of an officer, to do, to show up to their mission, do what they, what they need to do. And what is the mission? What does Hashem tell us this, this parasha? What's, what's, the, what's the role that we have? So Hashem tells us that there are seven branches of the Manera. The seven branches of the Manera have two meanings. There are seven, the seven branches of the Manera, as they are in, within all souls, as the Altar says, the seven branches of the Manera correspond to seven different ways of serving Hashem. Some people serve Hashem with love, some people serve Hashem with fear. And the Alderman discusses all seven, uh, how everyone has their own soul and their own way of serving Hashem. But then there is also the seven branches of the Manera as they are within each person. And what's unique about the Manera is the Manera is Miksha Achas. Manera is made out of one solid piece of gold, which means that although a person may have the nature of being more of an angry person, more of a calm person, and there's a time for everything, and there, there's different ways to serve Hashem, and there's different things that have to get done. But the idea of you, you can't always just go by your nature because your nature is not going to get you to the right place. In order to, to be there, to be the way Hashem wants you to be, you have to hammer out your manera. Hammer out your manera means that you, that you realize that all the different things that you have inside of yourself, whether it's Yerecha, whether it's Pircha, whether it's the bottom of your manera, which means your lowest soul capability or it's pircha, or it's your flower, which means your highest, beautiful, most beautiful part of yourself. So it, it all has to be hammered out so that you are uh, uh, serving Hashem in the way Hashem wants you to serve Him right now. You have to focus on what the what Hashem's intent is. You have to, you have to fix your manera so that you're not just uh, going in your own alignment of your, uh, of your animal soul, as, as we were discussing yesterday. Um, someone suggested to me this this book that is a very great book to help make decisions the uh and after he suggested it to me the interesting thing happened is that i happened to see this letter of the rebbe about the same subject the rebbe says what's a good way to learn how to make the good decisions you should learn the mimer of adam kiyakrev and Tera er. what is it saying adam kiyakrev adam kiyakrev the author speaks about every how every person has a gali soul and the animal soul and the animal soul is moody so your animal soul is what is, is has a, has a voice in your decision making. You're always going to be changing your decisions based upon your mood. You're always going to you're not going to always show up to the way you need to do, because your uh, your your animal soul is one day like an ox and and oxes are, have moods. So so in order to be the way you need to be, Altruist says you have to have a scaff. You have to you have to put a yoke on your animal soul and get it in check and have your and control that animal soul and then you can be able to make decisions. But if you go by your mood, you're always going to have uh, you're always going to make mistakes. So in a similar way, the menorah is taka has seven branches, but all seven branches come from the same piece of gold. It's kind of like, to me, like the, um, like they were discussing how Yaakov Avinu, Yaakov Avinu had oxes and he had, sh and he had sheep and he had cattle and he had servants. And, and all of Yaakov's wealth, however, came from sheep. He sold the sheep to uh, to do to get out everything else. So in a similar way, um, although every person has uh, various tendencies by their nature, but the the the, um, the basis of serving Hashem is Kabbalah. So is your sheep quality. Just like Yaakov made as well, whatever he bought was with sheep. So to on a personal level, what um, allows us to to be the way Hashem wants us to be is, is our Kabbalah also is accepting the yoke of Hashem. And uh, the, 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 the realization that whatever we have, it, it's miksha achas, it comes from the same piece that Hashem gave us for a purpose. 
the author actually uses three adjectives to discuss the first step of serving Hashem. He says four adjectives. This is the first step of serving Hashem. And not only is it the first step, it's Ikra. It's the main part of serving Hashem. The is the root of serving Hashem. That means whatever you're doing to serve Hashem, the first step is accepting the yoke of Hashem. Second thing is, while you're doing whatever you're doing, there is the, there is the bones, the bare bones of what you're doing. The bare bones, the main component, what holds it together is the fact that you're trying to serve Hashem, do what Hashem wants you to do. Then there is, besides that, there is Vesharsha. There is, where is it coming from? Everything that you're doing as a Jew has to come from Kabbalah Seh. Has to come from this sense of Miksha Achas. That you come from Hashem made you and you have a purpose of why you're here. Okay, so, so the, the decisions that you made on Shavuos are both on a personal level and they're also in regards to what they decide to do for others, the Spreterian Yiddishkeit, and, uh, and, and also, as uh, they have been told, um, uh, many people, like Rabbi Shul Einstein, have said to him that you have to be a shining example in your in how you could be serve Hashem in a way of joy, etc. And, uh, and and so so, so the, the message of of the twelfth of Sivan is not only regards to our decisions in in in, in our by in our own service of Hashem, but also regards to our spreading the Yiddishkeit to others, and also regarding these seven branches of the, the Meneira, not only as they are within ourselves, but also the seven branches of Meneira as they are in all the Jewish people, the idea of Avis Yisrael. And the Torah says that all the seven branches of the Meneira have to be facing the center of the Meneira. al mul Pneim there, they have to be facing the face of the Meneira. What does it mean to face the, what does it mean to face the, the middle of the Meneira? In addition to all the specific things that you're doing, there has to be the why. It has to be where it comes from. You could do something, as the Gemara says, if you do a mitzvah without a kavana, without having con- right concentration, it's like a body without a soul. So the idea of mul plam era, facing the era means, ah, I can see that space, mul plam in era, beautiful. So the idea of mul plam era means that you are, um, that you're like, before the giving of the Torah, nasiv and nishma. When you didn't say nasiv and nishma, they were in a state of total devotion to Hashem, they, they totally let go of all their desires. They said, we will do even before we hear, as we discussed, that means that even before they could hear a specific desire of Hashem, they already, they already said, we belong to you. Not just we'll do what you said, that we're going to do what you say, Hashem. But we belong to you, Hashem. It, it came from the essence of a Jew, to the essence of Hashem, that we will not just we're going to nullify ourselves to the will of Hashem, but al mul pneim neira means that we, a Jew decides to belong to Hashem, to give over himself to the one who has the desires. Not just to, to show obedience to mitzvahs of Hashem, but to show obedience, to have to have obedience, to have devotion to the one, who, to Hashem himself who gives the mitzvahs. So, so this, this is the, the theme of, of, uh, of Muf Neem Neira, that the, the idea of your, your, your idea of your Kabbalah Asil, your acceptance of Hashem's yoke. And this will help us understand the order of the Parsha, how it first discusses the lighting of the Meneira, and then it discusses the creation of the Meneira. Just like in Svir Sa'imer, Chayra, what are you doing by Svir Sa'imer? You're counting the days, but you're not really changing anything in those days. But yet, by counting the days, you're, you're, it, it, that, that itself is a mitzvah. In a similar way, when a Yid decides to light his Meneira, to the Meneira, again, is compared to Neshama, Neir Havai Nishma Sadna, the candle of God as a soul of man. So when Yid decides, that he wants to do something in his manera and light his manera, so that makes his whole manera new. That make causes a renewal in his in his in his very in, in who he is. So just like on Shavuos, Hashem gives us a tera anew, so too the Abisha gives us opportunity on the twelfth day of Sivan to renew to to totally not just to have a uh, tune up to your manera and to get an oil change in your manera, but by making decisions that we why not actually fulfill what we decided in the holiday of Shavuos and to bring it down to practicality. My so Iker action is the main thing and, and to add in specifics of the seven branches of Roman Nera, that causes that the whole Manera, that the whole stuff that we're made of have as a rebirth and as a renewal. The Rebbe says that this is something that even a child can understand. Even a child can understand that this idea of a re, that, that my Samanera, that gives us the ability to become brand new on this day, the 12th of Sivan, and, uh, and to have a higher manure than we had before.
so so briefly, what what would we what do we say today? Number one, the day of the twelfth of seven isn't only relevant to those people who messed up on Shavuos. Messed up on Shavuos for sure is relevant to you because you need to you need to fix up whatever you messed up. Number it's relevant to all those who had a perfect Shavuos because even if you have a perfect Shavuos, Hashem gave us more days to make it even better, to perfect it even more. And since since you are alive today, you say maybe the Ani and God gave you today another day. There's a few hours of, of this day. You have to think about how to add in your Torah study. And as we discussed a few times, that it's easy to tell who the uh, the uh, bride is at bride is at a wedding, but not so easy to tell who the groom is. And you know who the groom is because the groom is the one who takes the bride home. So how do we know that we really married Hashem? We got the Teira. It depends upon the decisions we make post Shavuos. What do we actually do with the Torah that we got? We, are we actually learning it? And my, not just learning it, but God learning it brings to action. Are, is our learning causing stuff to happen? Are we doing mitzvahs in a different way? Are we spreading Torah in a different way? Did Shavuos, Tavshin, Pei Aleph actually do something to us? Like, imagine if aliens came from outer space and they were just suddenly like erasing the calendar the last uh, two weeks. Would not not in a way that in a way that's seamless, like you wouldn't know, right? Would would there actually be a difference in our lives to to the to the future right, regarding the holiday of shoes? The shoes actually do something to us. So that's the power of of this twelfth of seven. Is that it's though it's not officially a, a holiday, but it's a day we don't say tachin because Hashem gives us the ability today to draw down not just made the simcha, the simcha of the yantiv. And the primus of the yantav is we bless each other before the holiday of Shuas to receive the Torah with joint inspiration. So the inspiration and sincerity was on a certain level on Shuas, or it wasn't. And today's day, Hashem gives the ability to, to add in more joy and more sincerity and, and, and in a way that it should be mul pneam na'ira, that we should think about the, in a way of nasiv and nishma, the intent of Hashem in creation to give over desires to Hashem to do it the way, the way they, uh, with, with kavona, towards Hashem's, Hashem's intent. And this decision causes us to have a brand new manera, to have a brand new, to, to renew who we are. Any, any questions or comments? All right. Yes, we'll stop today. Yes, sir. Yeah, have uh, I, took, I, I took this cheesecake out of uh, Shavuos. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you had to start. You had to start. There's some Hasidim who have apple and honey to so they should like really, you know, bring it home as a Shoshana. So I think having cheesecake today is a great start. I'm thinking about there you go. Absolutely. Have another piece, but don't be don't stop there. Also think about how much tear you added. How's your chitas? One of the things you're supposed to decide on Shuas is to add in your chumash to montanya. That was a really good uh mimer Kutatara on Birkos Hamazon and the connection to Birkos Kohanim. Go ahead. That's a direct correlation to each other. That I mean, the gist of it is what we are eating. For, for you start the day with davening, gets you in the frame of mind of the Yavoda and wanting to connect to Hashem, and then when you eat you're actually connecting to the sparks that are found within the food. But you, when you, you could be elevating such an immense amount of sparks that you don't have a Kaylee to be able to hold all of these sparks that you're elevating. And we don't know how many sparks. We're not Sadiq and we don't know if, we're, if this piece of cheesecake has one spark or a million, sp we, we don't know. So a lot of times you do without knowing elevating a lot of sparks and you might not be able to hold them so that's the level of Birkos Kahanim where Hashem should should protect you should guard you what does it mean guard you that he's guarding you from Klippa being able to potentially grab these sparks that you've now just elevated and trying to get nourishment from the Klippa so it's it's more than just you know we always say Birkos Kahanim is to give you Parnasa and Hashem should guard you from that parnasa being taken and then you should be able to hold that parnasa it's, it's, it's more than that it's all just about the birurim of the sparks in the food that you eat and it's dafka why berkas kohanim is connected to uh berkas hamazon because when you're saying berkas hamazon you are allowing hashem to give you the ability of protecting those sparks and making it one within you and becoming the dwelling to become a mishkan within yourself of those sparks that you've now just elevated so 
it, it's getting into that frame of mind again that Hashem is creating something from nothing at every moment. And he's giving you the ability to make a Mishkan down here for him. And by the whole purpose of the world is all the, all of these sparks that we're supposed to be, to be elevating. So like you think you're doing this great thing of eating and using that food to learn Torah and Davin and do all this wonderful stuff and getting all of these sparks, but they're all just getting taken by Klippa. And a lot of times that's why a person could now have a bigger tiber for something else. It's, it's, it's every time you try to do something good, the opposing force comes and tries to grab that which you've just now put into your reservoir of sparks per se. Some some deeper stuff, but it was geschmack. It actually because I've oh, I've been personally wanting to just focus more on actual brachas and brachas kahamazan. I want to be lazy with that and definitely not holding on the level where I should be and learning this was just. So the brachas kahamazan has similar impact to brachas kain. And it's, 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 it's why Birkos, why, why do we, it, it, I mean, I'm, I'm paraphrasing. I mean, there's obviously like the question of why do we only have to say Birkos Hamazan what, but for Kazayas versus being full and the Rabbana come and say, no, it's only Kazayas, but actual, but Tachlis, Min HaTorah, it's, you have to be full to the point of satiety. And the, the, the Mimer question is why would Hashem even give that, that halacha of being to the point of being full to say Birkas Hamazan. It makes sense what the Rabbanan are saying. You eat a little bit, you should be saying Birkas Hamazan or Kazayas. It shouldn't be to the point of being full. So it, it, it's, it, it has to do with you being full. And what does it mean? Full, full of these sparks, full of uh, allowing you to be internalizing these sparks that you can then use in the proper way for Kavana and Davni and, and, and everything that the food is is allowing you. Okay, okay, I'm coming. Okay, okay, very good. Okay. Another, um, another point of Sikha Bunam Shish says about the uh, being satiated, he says that when he is satisfied with what Hashem gives him, even though it's not something that satisfies his body, so Hashem responds to you and Hashem says, I'm satisfied with what you're giving me, even though it's not and many mitzvahs I expected from you, but if you show appreciation for this kazayas, this little bit, Hashem says, I'll, I'll do the same for you. And also, one more thing I want to say about Kainim, is the Rebbe says, we learned in yesterday, that Brichas Kainim is the African middle of Davin, and everyone says it because everyone's able to bring down what you, you want to ask you, cause Hashem, Hashem to have a new will. The Brichas Kainim is about bringing the will, whatever new will Hashem was, so to speak, changed by your davening to bring it down. But Gashmi is that's the day of Brichas Kainim in the middle of Davin. Anyways, have a great day, Rebbe Zev. Later out.